Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to the Camping Post. If you have recently purchased an RV or are in the market for one, then this video might be for you. Right now we are sitting in our Intech Sold On Rover, which we purchased a few months ago. Uh, prior to that, we had only researched the RVs themselves and not all of the extra items that are needed to take that RV off the lot and get it up and running at a campsite. So in this video, we are going to outline some of the items that we had to buy and hopefully save you weeks and weeks of research time. So if you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Enjoy. There's a lot of things to consider before you purchase an RV. You need to make sure you have a proper tow vehicle with the appropriate amount of um, weight capacity. Uh, you need to make sure you got a good tow hitch. You may or may not need a sway bar or a weight distribution hitch. Um, you'll need a brake controller if your RV has brakes. Um, you'll need stabilizers and things like that once you get to the campsite. Um, but the most important thing is to make sure you do your research. I try to share my mistakes so that you don't have to make the mistakes I already made. We hadn't gotten our hitch and all that on our tow vehicle yet. So there were a lot of things that we had to get in place uh, before we could take that camper off the lot. But what we're going to get into here are some of the basic things that we had to buy aside from getting our vehicle set up to tow. I really suggest doing the internet research on that. Also taking the time to talk with your dealer to make sure that you're getting everything that you need in order to drive that camper safely down the road, um, not only for yourself, but for the others that are on the road out there as well. Um, safety is number one. So once you've got your tow vehicle all set up, hitch, seven pin harness, sway bar, weight distribution hitch maybe, brake controller, so on and so forth. Uh, there are other things that you're gonna need to park your trailer um, once you get to where you're going. One of the first things you're gonna need are some wheel chocks. Um, these are the ones I got. These are heavy duty rubber. I bought a four pack of these. So I got a front and back for each tire. Um, the other thing you're gonna need, this leveler. I really wanted to keep our setup as simple as possible. I wanted to only kind of carry one item, if at all possible. I ended up going for, um, I ended up purchasing the BAL 28050 light tra trailer tire leveler. Now, before I bought this thing, I did a lot of research, read a lot of reviews. It's my chalk and it's my leveler all in one. The thing I really wanted to avoid was having to back in and out over and over changing depths on levelers or leveling blocks over and over again. I just want to be able to pull in. You basically put that under your tire when you get there before you unhitch and then you can essentially crank up this leveler to lift your tire till you get your trailer level. It is a little tight on the tire so depending on what the surface is sometimes you may have rocks or there might be dirt. Um, Sometimes I need to pound that leveler onto the tires, but other than that, it's pretty easy peasy. In regards to your tires, you always want to make sure that you have a tire gauge so that you can check your tire pressure every time. We also had to get a large socket and a deep socket for our lugs on the tire so that we could check them before for each trip. This is a three quarter inch deep socket. Make sure you pick the one that works with your tires. Again, this is all related to an Intex old Don Rover. I'm using a heavy duty socket wrench. Some people say you should use a torque wrench and check the torque. Again, do your research, do what works for you. Another thing that we got are some safety cones. They're a four pack, they're collapsible, so you just pop them up. We can set those out around our vehicle before we pull out of our home or out of a, a out of the um, campsite. You can also use them to mark the edges of your campsite to make it easier to back in so you have a reference point. You can see them, but also other people are aware that you're there. Some people will also get um, 
backup cameras uh, so you can back use the backup camera to see what's behind you there are also extensions you can get for many vehicles the extension mirrors or larger mirrors to put on trucks uh, just depends on what your tow vehicle is again do the research find out what works for you um, right now we don't have a backup cam but that is something that i want to get we're probably already familiar with all the other stuff you need for camping we might cover that in another video but we're going to cover the basic needs to use your rv at a campsite set up for rvs you basically need an electrical setup water setup and a sewage setup aside from whatever accoutrements you want inside for cooking sleeping so on and so forth we have three boxes this one would be our electrical box you can see through the box to see what's in there so you don't spend a lot of time looking around we've got an extension cord uh, for use around the campsite your rv should come with a 30 amp cable to hook into your rv uh, we'll kind of show you what that looks like and how you hook that up uh, if you don't have one you can always order one but yours should come with that so beyond that you want to make sure you have the appropriate adapters this is a 50 amp to 30 amp plug they also make a 30 amp to 15 amp plug campsites may have different hookups depending on where you go because you don't want to be caught at a campsite not being able to hook up to the electric because the camp store may or may not have these adapters or they might be very expensive or you may be so far out to go get one and then you would be without electricity. You also want to make sure you get a surge protector before you hook any electrical up to your RV. Uh, you never know what kind of state some of these electrical boxes may be at at the campsite. So what you want to do is get a surge protector. We got the uh, watchdog surge protector. We'll show it here, uh, kind of how it works. Basically when we get to a site, we turn the power off on the electrical box. We plug in our surge protector, power on the box. We look at the surge protector because it will tell us if the power is good. Uh, if all indicators are good, we turn the box back off, hook the electric up to the camper, then we can turn our power on. The nice thing about our watchdog is it does have Bluetooth capability, so we can monitor the electrical draw on the system. Yeah as well as set limits for voltage and wattage. So if we go outside of those parameters, it will send us alerts and let us know so that we can shut down power or take appropriate action. Plus we can just see if we're drawing too much power and need to tone it down a little bit. This watchdog also has a little breaker. Some of them have a manual breaker you could reset. This one blows when, when it gets a bad surge. Um, so we made sure to buy the extra replacement part. We keep that in the camper so that if it does blow, we can get that fixed and we'll be up and running again. The little space heater, this is a 350 watt space heater. We do have gas heat in the system, in the camper. We use this as supplemental, so if it's really cold, we'll turn on the gas, propane heat, heat up the camper, and then use this to just maintain the heat. This one's fairly quiet. Um, the fan doesn't really blow out enough, but we put this kind of hanging on our wall near our sleeping area and it, and it supplements throughout the night so that the main heater doesn't turn on. One thing to note is in the Intex Old Dawn Rovers, the heaters are kind of loud when they turn on, they kind of crank and clang a little bit. So that does wake you up in the middle of the night. So if you can supplement, you might get a little bit better night's sleep. That's basically it for the electrical. That kind of gets you up and running, gets you lights and electricity. All right, next here we're gonna talk about water. So getting water into your unit so that you can run your sink, take a shower, use your toilet, all that kind of stuff. Um, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure you have a water filter. So the water filter, you hook up to your the water supply at the campground. Um, that will feed into this. It will filter any, any bad stuff out of your water. Make sure that you have good fresh water. The next thing you'll want is a, a hose, a water hose. There's lots of different kinds out there. This one said it was safe for drinking. I like these metal water hoses because they don't really get kinks in them and they're a little bit more pliable, so they're easier to manage. This is a 25 foot. You might want another 25 foot for redundancy in case the water lines are too far away from your campsite. So this would hook into, 
in line with this water filter. Then at the other end of our hose, we would hook to a pressure regulator as part of the kit. We got this little flexible hose, which is kind of nice to have at your hookup point. Um, the filter and the water regu pressure regulator. So what this does is make sure that you don't get too much pressure coming into your camper from city water. So if you're gonna run a line to the camper, um, which on the Intex Old Dawn, you can run a line in so you can have city water or you could use your water hose just to fill up your tank and use the 20 gallon onboard tank uh, and use your water pump that way. If you hook to the water, city water, you won't have to use your water pump. It'll just come through. This pressure regulator keeps the pressure from getting too great into your system and blowing your water lines. So if too much came in, you blow your lines, you could blow some of the connection points. So make sure you have one of these in line. Um, and again, we bought a couple of these extra flexible water hose connectors. They're kind of nice for any connection point that you've got on the RV. Um, and we'll show you how to hook this up uh, to the RV and why we have these. Something else we purchased for when we're going to winterize and blow out our lines. There's this Camco Black RV blowout hose. So you basically hook this into, your, um, into the camper and then you can hook an air compressor like a tire pump to this end here on low pressure no more than 30 psi i usually do 20 to 25 and when you're letting all your water out of your system to winterize you can use this to blow air in and blow out your lines i just let it on there and and run and blow out all the water and watch it drip out the bottom another item that we found we ended up needing you can hook this to a regular garden hose um, but I bought this one we found we needed to clean out our hot water tank. I bought this one because it has an adjustable nozzle here. So you can change it to a spray or a stream. Um, if you take this off, this is really fantastic for cleaning out your water heater because you can basically put this all the way into the tube, turn on your water, and you have four um, little holes spraying out the tube so you can spray out the debris from your water tank um, and it's got a little water level control so just a nice little thing to have this isn't something you need to have on your first trip but it's something handy as you go along for maintaining maintaining your RV and in tandem with that you also want to make sure you check your hot water plug this is your hot water plug this is an anode this sits in your hot water tank and attracts particulates to it. So they corrode this tube, this metal, instead of corroding your tank. So these, these are expendable um, and they will degrade over time. So you want to check them every once in a while um, and replace them. When I ordered mine, I ordered a two pack. Our RV was used, um, so ours was fairly degraded. So we did need to replace these. Um, you basically unscrew the old one, put the new one in, and put some uh, plumber's tape on here when you screw that in. Um, in conjunction with that, we had to purchase a socket extender and a socket that would fit on this anode. Um, and it kind of had to be deep so you could get down into where this sits on the hot water tank. Um, this is a 1 and 1 16th. Make sure that's the one you need for your camper. Um, just always keep a couple of these in case you lose some on site. Little gaskets for your water hoses. Other than that, that's about it for the water. We're not going to get into the maintenance of the tank. Just wanted to show you basically the items that you need just to get water into your tank so that you can go camping. Okay, now we're going to talk about sewage. So the Intex Old Dawn Rover <clears throat> has a shower and a toilet and a sink and a drain on that sink. So all that water, all that wastewater goes into a holding tank, a 26 gallon, gallon holding tank of gray black water. So it's all the gray water and the black water all mixed together in one tank. Once it fills up, whether you're using the sink or the toilet, the water's got to go somewhere and you're going to have to dump it at a dump station. We have another bin of items for just our sewage stuff. First item you want to make sure you have are some gloves. So make sure anytime you're doing work at the dump station, you've got a good set of gloves to 
cover your hands and your arms and always just wash yourself off, replace these every so often. The other item is Camco sewer hose. We bought a kit that is two 10 foot pieces. Um, one of them we keep in the storage tube underneath the camper. And then this one we keep in the other storage area. We haven't used this one yet. We just got two 10 foot pieces in case uh, the drain or the dump station was so far away that we needed to extend a line. The other thing is this Sidewinder sewer hose support for 20 foot. So we got two 10 foot pieces, 20 feet. So we needed to make sure that we could support 20 foot of hose. As you can see, this is stacked going down from higher to lower so that when you hook this and you run your hose from the unit and expand this out, it slopes down so it carries the wastewater to the dump station. Part of our hose kit came this. This goes to the dump. This goes and down to the dump drain. All these things have caps, so you wanna make sure you cap them when you're done. So your hose hooks to the drain. Run this to your drain. This goes down in the drain. Sometimes you need to set a rock on top of this to hold it down in the drain, make sure it doesn't come out. This part comes up towards your camper and it will connect to something like this. This is the Camco Rhino Blaster Tank Pro Rinser. So this has a section to eliminate your waste water, but it also has a way to inject water back into the system so that you can clean your tank out. So this will hook to your gate on the system and then your wastewater tube going to the dump station hooks onto your hose. This is onto your camper. Um, so when you're ready, you can release the gate. This is a gate. You'll have one of these on your camper. You release the gate on the camper, release the gate here. All your wastewater will go out. You can drain, you can see as it goes through, whether it's clean or dirty. Once it trickles, pop your gate up, hook this to the incoming water. Then you can turn this on Water will spray into your tank. You wait till that all fills up, turn your water off, then you can release your gate. Then you'll see all your wastewater go down. You can see if it's clean or not. What you'll wanna do is repeat this over and over again until you see clear liquid coming out of this. If you see particles, particulates, dirty water coming through here, keep rinsing. Our camper was used, so it took about four or five goes to get our tank clean. Um, we don't really use the bathroom in there as of yet. So this was perfect. I would recommend getting this and no other, or at least one of these with a, a gate on it and a rinser so that you can clean out your tank. The only other way is if you spray water in through the toilet, down into the toilet and spray that out over and over and over. So this was a really easy way to clean out our gray black water tank. I highly recommend this. I got the cheaper version that doesn't didn't have the, the rinse feature on it. I sent it back and ordered this one. So I highly recommend this. Other things that go with the waste are these drop-ins. Um, you can drop these in if you're gonna use your toilet and they help break down toilet paper and other um, matter in there. So you'll just follow the instructions on those if you're gonna use your toilet. Another item we got are some um, Camco toilet waste bags just for emergencies. So if for some reason our camper is winterized and we can't use our toilet or our toilet is full for some reason or for some reason we can't use our toilet we have bags that we can stretch over the toilet and use them for number two um, and then you immediately take that bag and then you go throw that away somewhere um, again it's only for emergency purposes um, but i recommend just having some of these on hand just in case especially if for some reason um, your plumbing or your toilet's not working right and there's no bathroom in sight, it's your campsite. That is the basic setup for getting your sewer system going. I'm sure there are other things that you could do in addition to that, but those are the basics to get you to a campsite and dump your black gray water tank once you're done camping. Um, we did this the first go around um, on our first trip out, cleaned out our tank, 
and everything's hunky-dory. We did that right before winter came, so just in time for winterizing. So being at a campsite with a dump station, it was perfect time to clean out that tank, rinse out all that old stuff, um, and get that, that tank clean and ready for the winter. So hopefully this video has helped you figure out some of the stuff that you will need to get in order to take your RV off the lot, go camping with you, your friends, or your family. Uh, hopefully you found this useful. Uh, please feel free to like, subscribe, and share our YouTube channel. Or if you have any questions, please put them in the questions and comments below. Thanks for watching and happy camping. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on post notifications.